أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وإمامنا وقدوتنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear respected brothers and sisters Ramadan have left Ramadan will come back but we are not sure that we will be witnessing another Ramadan we cannot guarantee that therefore we have to continue the act of worship that we gained during the month of Ramadan. We should not be fatigued. We should keep the momentum that we attained throughout the whole month to keep it for the rest of the whole year until next Ramadan comes. You know, brothers and sisters, whoever fasted Ramadan was given the glad tidings from the Prophet ﷺ that your sins, your previous sins will be forgiven. Man sama Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. Whoever fasted Ramadan out of faith that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed it and seeking the reward from Allah the previous sins of that person will be deleted, erased subhanallah so you finish Ramadan with no sins you are sin free subhanallah the same way for doing the Qiyam during Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ also gave us that glad tiding. Man qama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. The one who, f- who stand, you know, the night praying during Ramadan, his or her previous sins will be forgiven, subhanAllah. So we finish Ramadan with a plain page, subhanAllah. White page that what's going to come after it, it's going to be recorded. So we have to be careful. We have to make sure that, oh, okay, I fasted, that's it, that's it, and I don't need to continue. No. Because, as we know, that the Lord of Ramadan, the one that you used to worship during Ramadan, you fasted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you prayed the night, to, uh, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to show off, is the same Lord of the rest of the year. Rabbu Ramadan, who Rabbu Baqiyat al-Shuhur al-Sanat, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That's why we should not fatigue. We should not stop the act of worship. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, he gave him the instructions, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship you Lord until yaqeen comes. What is yaqeen? Is death. Until you die. Until you leave this dunya. So the act of worship does not stop by the end of a season. And that's very, very important. Ramadan was a training, you know, class that we went through. It's a school, we entered, we learned, we, you know, uh, gained something, is to help us for the rest of the year. Very, very crucial, brothers and sisters. The same love, the same passion you had during Ramadan should stay with you. Otherwise, the, the thing that you've done during Ramadan may not be accepted. You know the Sahaba, the first generation, the followers of the Prophet ﷺ, the first generation, used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months before Ramadan starts to get into Ramadan. Ya Allah, balighna Ramadan. Get us into Ramadan. And after Ramadan is over, they will ask Allah for the following six months to accept Ramadan from them. Ya Allah, accept Ramadan from us. The acceptance is very crucial, brothers and sisters. That's why Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he said, Kunu li qabool al-amal ashaddu ihtimaman min al-amal nafsih. Be very keen for the acceptance of the deed, the good deed that you do, better than being keen to do the act of worship. Because if you do everything and it's not accepted, that's a waste. We said, wow, I've done all this and all goes in vain. I'm going to lose it. That's why scholars, they said, if you want to judge yourself to see how your, your act of worship was accepted, especially after Ramadan, is to follow these steps. Number one, look at what you are doing. If you are doing more good deeds, you are increasing your good, good things that you're doing. After Ramadan, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you tawfiq to continue the good, the good work. That's number one. Number two, they said in shirah al-sadr, your, your, your heart, your chest is open to receive more. You like to come to the masjid more. You like to read Quran like he used to, to do it before. You like to pray at night, you know, whether or you can do anything extra of the other extra, uh, you know, rakahat at night. And you, you like to help the others. You, you, you feel that your heart is into these things. You know, I want to do it. I wanna, maybe I don't have time, but Ya Allah, help me. I want to do it. This is what they call it, Inshirah al-Sadr, that your chest is open to all these acts of worship, the good things. At-Tawbah min ad al You repent for the previous sins. Always you remember, Oh Ya Allah, I did that mistake. Forgive me. You know, brothers and sisters, when you say to Allah, I am sorry. Ya Allah, forgive me. Astaghfirullah. Allah loves you. And Allah forgive you. A person came to the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasulullah, if I've done something bad, and I said Astaghfirullah, 
Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to forgive me? He said, yes. He said, what if I've, I've done it again? You know, I, I repeated the same mistake. And I went back to Allah and said, Astaghfirullah, forgive me, O Allah. Is he going to forgive me? He said, yes. Third time, fourth time, he said, even if you do it million times, you keep repeating the things. And you know that this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. And it's for you. Whenever you call upon him, whenever you ask him to forgive you, will forgive you, Allah will forgive you. Subhanallah. Never ever despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why very, very important brothers and sisters to keep the istighfar. When you do something bad, follow it with a good one that it will erase it as the Prophet said. You know, if you follow it with a good one, it will delete it. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very merciful. He doesn't want to punish us. He wants us to appreciate Him Almighty and to know His existence and to know that He is there for you. The moment we ignore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, no, I'm... I'm fine, I'm good, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I do this, I can do everything, I have strong power, strength. And the moment we stay away from our Lord, at that point, problems will start. We are destroying ourselves, subhanAllah. That's why we need to keep that momentum. You remember during Ramadan, you will come to the masjid and you will wait for long hours and you stay in lines you will listen to the quran recited you know for you know a few minutes you know a half an hour an hour an hour and a half two hours subhanallah and you don't get bored and you're looking for more this energy the charge that you got during the month of Ramadan, it should stay with you. It should not fade. It should not disappear. Because this charge that you got throughout the month of Ramadan, it should stay with you for the rest of the year until next Ramadan. We've learned from Ramadan, brothers and sisters, lots of lessons. And if I ask any one of you, I said, wow, I have lots of lessons I can tell. I changed. I really changed. Ramadan made me to change myself, my attitude, my behavior, uh, my vision, how to look at the others, how to have mercy on the others, how to thought of the others, the needy, those who cannot find things to eat or drink, they cannot find clean water throughout the globe, subhanAllah. I learned, I learned from Ramadan a major concept, which is a taqwa. Brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in the Quran, that's the main purpose for fasting. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh, you who believe, fasting Ramadan was prescribed unto you like it was prescribed on those before you in order for you to attain a taqwa. What is a taqwa? It's how to fear Allah, how to know that Allah is watching you, is seeing you, is around you, and watches everything you do. Subhanallah, look at it. When you were fasting, 
during the, the day of Ramadan. You enter the kitchen, you see the water, you know, icy water, you see the food, the fruit that you like to, to eat, consume, and it's lawful, halal. You don't touch it. Why? Nobody around you. Nobody's watching. But you don't do it. Why? Because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You follow the instructions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you. You know that Allah is watching you. That is a taqwa. That is a taqwa. This concept should be there all the time. Not only during Ramadan. You're by yourself in the middle of the night on the web, chatting, searching, getting into bad stuff, things, hurting others, gossiping, doing this, backbiting. Uh, nobody's watching. Nobody's around me. But you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is around you. If you have this concept installed in your heart, in your brain, Wallahi, you don't need cameras. You don't need security guards. You don't need anyone to watch you. Because you'll be self, you know, conscious about these things. Very important. This is the concept that we learn from Ramadan throughout the month. Subhanallah. We won't do anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the month. And why, when the month is over, we go back to all the bad habits? Abusing my power, abusing others verbally, you know, or physically, um, spreading mischief, um, killing, all this thing. Why? What you learned from Ramadan? All those concepts that we learned are wasted? That means that person did not learn anything from Ramadan. It was an intensive course that we went through it for a whole month. is to train ourselves, to discipline ourselves. Subhanallah. You see, in, during Ramadan, when the Prophet ﷺ told us, even if someone comes and attacks you and says bad about you and try to fight with you, said, what do you say? Your response will be, I am a fasting person. Hold on. I can't do these things. I'm a fasting person. Subhanallah. Why don't we apply the same thing? Why don't I restrain myself from doing bad things against others? Hurting others, hurting their feelings. Not just, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, a word can hurt the feeling of that person more than a weapon. I like. So you have to be careful. And that's why when the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Muslimu man salim al muslimoon min lisanihi wa yadihi. The true Muslim is the one that people are saved from his or her tongue and hand. These two organs, what they can do? A lot. Small ones, but they can do a lot. When you use this, you know, improperly, or you use this improperly, you see what's going to happen. La ilaha illallah. That's why the wisdom that comes out of the mouth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and said, you have to guard these two things. Say so people, they said, oh, I don't talk, I don't, but you type these days, you chat, you gossip on the, you know, this uh, typing, this is the same as talking. Same concept. So we have to be very careful. So what we've learned throughout the month of Ramadan, we need to apply it. We need to continue to practice it. 
throughout the year. Wallahi, if we do this, he won't find things bad happening around us. You will find people living in peace, harmony, and everyone is helping each other, everyone is caring for the other, you know, subhanAllah. This is what Islam wants people to do. See, all these acts of worship that we do is to elevate our souls. Ruqi al-insan. Al-Islam jaa li ruqi insaniyat al-insan. To show you as a human being, a true human being, you feel, you care, you share, you do good things, you don't harm. La darara wa la dirar. You don't harm yourself, you don't harm the others. These are the instructions of your deen, of Islam, subhanAllah. I don't know why these instructions get twisted, changed, to the point that people started fearing Islam, fearing to hear about Islam, fearing to learn about Islam, subhanAllah. Because of, of what we've done, Muslims, not the Islam, we have not understood our deen properly to share it with the others. And the others, they was just watching you, watching us, what we're doing. We are the practice of this deen. If you practice the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu wants you to do, everyone will look at you and say, this is true Islam. This is the thing that we like. And this is what attracted people in the past to Islam. And still, up to date, up till now, we see people coming to Islam because of the behavior of the Muslims they were surrounding them. You can ask our brothers and sisters who came to Islam recently. So brothers and sisters, this is very serious. You are representing your deen. You are the messenger of your deen. If we behave, you know, other than what we believe in, out or one, what the instructions are, so it doesn't make sense. And people will look at you and say, wow, this is, what is the difference? Okay, I'll stay atheist, I'll stay in other faith. Well, what is the difference? I mean, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. What is the thing that uh, will attract me to look at, into your religion or your Islam, subhanAllah? That's why Islam came to elevate our souls to reach the levels of the angels. SubhanAllah. You can reach the level, the level of the angels, SubhanAllah, by your manner, your behavior, your good deeds that you do. On the other hand, a person can reach to the bottom with what they are doing. So brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. We have to apply all the, the, the lessons that we learn from the, from the month of Ramadan and to keep that momentum for the rest of the year. We learn the good relationship with the Quran. Every time, subhanAllah, you walk into the masjid, you grab the mushaf, you read, you sit down, you listen to the Qur'an during Salat al-Taraweeh, you do all these, you know, things, and you listen to the Qur'an, you read the Qur'an. Why this stops after Ramadan? Why don't you have something after Ramadan? Keep that relationship with the Qur'an. We used to come to the masjid to pray. And we will find the time during Ramadan. We will, you know, force ourselves, we'll make the schedule when we, we come to the masjid. And then once more Ramadan is over, wow, 
people they stop coming to the masjid why brothers and sisters you are worshiping the same Lord you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of Ramadan the Lord of Sha'ban the Lord of Shawwal the, Ro the Lord of the rest of the year the whole year subhanallah we should not fatigue we should continue that good work that we've done and we invested during Ramadan I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness for me and for you aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum astaghfiruna الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه صلاة وسلاما إلى يوم الدين To summarize what I, I said in the first khutbah brothers and sisters is to continue the good work that we've done during the month of Ramadan and to take advantage of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with that month and we gained lots of hasanat we left Ramadan sin free sin free subhanallah and we don't want to start accumulating sins day and night again because we don't know brothers and sisters that next Ramadan will be able to witness subhanallah maybe we'll be alive maybe we won't, won't be able to even fast Ramadan we'll be sick or we'll be out of this dunya out of this life you don't know you cannot guarantee that that's why you have to keep yourself ready any time to leave this world when a person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him Meta sa'a? when is the hour when is the day of judgment he told him Mada are you ready did you prepare for it are you prepared if it's coming today tomorrow are you prepared to meet your Lord that is the thing is to be prepared 24 7 whenever your time comes to leave this dunya to go to your Lord you have to be ready when you meet your Lord and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم تقبل منا رمضان اللهم تقبل منا رمضان اللهم تقبل منا رمضان اللهم اجعله راحلا بذنوبنا اللهم اجعله راحلا بذنوبنا اللهم اعده علينا سنين بعد سنين ونحن في أمن وسلامة وإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم كن مع عبادك المستضعفين في الأرض اللهم كن مع عبادك المستضعفين في الأرض في كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين يا رب العالمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا برحمتك يا مولانا شر ما قضيت يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة